Hey YouTube, this is another piece of maple, a little bit straighter than what I've been cutting. It appears to be a little nicer, has a lot more branches in it, so I'm expecting to see some knots in this lumber. But before I uh, do the cutting, I'm going to tell you that whenever I started a new semester um, teaching construction project management, I always try to um, get people to understand that it's not always about the money. So with that, um, there was a poem that I used to recite for them. So believe it or not, on this here YouTube channel, I'm going to give you a poem. Okay guys, so I decided to sit down <clears throat> because I don't want to stand and lose all my energy for the day. So anyway, the poem, I think uh, Emerson wrote this poem. And I used to do a lot of reading and uh, poetry. My father insisted on it, uh, as well as everything else. So um, I think it's called The Measure of Success, if I'm not mistaken. So it starts off like this. To laugh often and much. Now, I'm not, I don't have the personality that is always... Uh, laughing, but I do get a lot of chuckles about things, and I feel, you know, relatively happy with my life, so I'm not, I have nothing to complain about, so I guess in my own way I do that. Um, to win the respect of intelligent people. Now, this is, um, you know, to win the respect of a fool doesn't really mean a lot to you. I mean, if the guy's foolish, like in, like in other words, if somebody takes drugs and you want to take drugs because you want to be like them and they introduce this to you and they think this is wonderful, I'd say you're pretty much an idiot, regardless, drinking, whatever, um, or even driving like a fool. Uh, the second or the next one comes up and it's uh, to win the affection of children. So, you know, you want to be kind and understanding to those who are not of your age. So, in other words, if as you grow older in your endeavors, and I used to tell this to the project managers, as you grow older in your endeavors, you're going to learn a lot more, and there's going to be young men coming onto the site. To try to make fools out of these people is a mistake, and you shouldn't do it. And we have a lot of people on YouTube that try to do that, but... You know, it depends on what you're willing to say and not say, whether you put up with it or not. Um, to earn the appreciation of honest critics and endure the betrayal of false friends. So, an honest critic um, is someone who, and normally there's someone who loves you or cares about you. And it can be in a different there's a lot of different meanings to the word love, uh, you know, and I'm talking about someone who is genuinely concerned about you for your own sake. So this critic then, this honest critic, would be someone who doesn't criticize you so they feel good. They criticize you so that you know what's right or wrong, you know, according to the norm of where you are or what you're trying to do. Um, this can be a tough one, but uh, nonetheless, people won't be saying it to make themselves feel good, which on YouTube you have a whole lot of people that need to feel good, and therefore they sort of break that. And the part about the uh, endure the betrayal of false friends. You know, in my lifetime, I have met a whole lot of people, and my wife and I, uh, besides the businesses that we've been in, we also have a, a venture capitalist, which means that we take money and invest it into a worthwhile cause where we can make more money. And believe me, don't even try writing me and asking me for money because that's not how it works. It's got to be a sure thing in my mind before it happens. So we get a whole lot of people, especially on certain... Um, internet connections that once they hear that all of a sudden I'm their best friend or they want to be friends which I ignore and I'm good at judging that so 
you know, that's the way it is. But as far as betrayal of false friends, you know, false friends can be, well, I don't know, uh, I would imagine that if you marry someone thinking that they're thinking the same thing you're thinking and they've told you that, and then you find out that it's all about your money or it's all about your status or something, and in the end they can't deal with that, um, you know, you may not, just with a spouse, you could lose something. Uh, when it comes to your children, you can lose. Um, children may be your best friend when it comes to divvying out your cash to them, if you're the cash cow, or um, they may fear you for some reason. Maybe you'll take away their freedoms to do this or that. So they become friendly with you, not all kids, I'm saying some. This is, we're talking about the betrayal of false friends. So I'm saying it can be a spouse, it can be a, your own children that, you know, appear to be one way and in their back of their mind they're thinking something else. So anyway, that's what he meant, I believe, by false friends. So, um, and naturally there's people, and the, the reason I mentioned the money is because a lot of times people, they want something from you, even something as simple as a sawmill, they want or need lumber for some reason and they don't want to pay for it so all of a sudden they're your buddy they're going to bring you um, you know cakes pies and whatever and sometimes those people also are not your real friends but that's up to you to judge i judge according to my set of rules you can judge according to yours so then well emerson goes on to say to appreciate beauty and to find the best in others so um we can all appreciate beauty, whether it's a beautiful woman, beautiful right now. I've been admiring many, many trees, i got to tell you. Um, whether it be that or a nice looking car or, you know, just the beauty that is not seen but heard out of a little kid's mouth or out of someone's mouth or, um, you know, something similar to that. So you appreciate that beauty that you're seeing or hearing. Um, and to find the best in others. My mom used to t tell me that a lot of times because I, before um, I got married, when I would come home after work at night, you know, sometimes I'd be complaining about this person or that person. My mom would always say uh, that everybody's not all bad. Normally, she said there are some, but everybody's not all bad. And the best thing you can do is just find out what they're good at and use that. So I started doing that and I became a very good boss with that, you know, a good boss at work. I was able to get things done simply by knowing who was the best person to put here or there. Sometimes though the problem is, like say if somebody's running a piece of heavy equipment, to take them off of that and to give them another job if they really liked running equipment, you had to be able to explain to them where their talent was. And sometimes it was hard to do, but anyway, so you want to find the best in others. And then the last part, which I think is the most fantastic words I've ever heard, is to know that even one person breathed a little easier because you have lived. This is to have succeeded. I love that. Because that takes all of the money, all of the wealth, and all of the um, things that people own and have away from this criteria of being a success. And it means that anyone then, any person, can be successful. All you gotta do is follow some of the rules. So guys, I know you'd probably never believe you would hear a poem on a sawmill channel. But you have, and now we're going to start to cut this maple up. Now, so I cut that off there. What I want to say to you is, um, when, you're, when you come up to cut, and you hit something like I just hit that, and I needed to back out of the cut, you want to, be, you want to back out of the cut slowly. Because especially while the, if the saw is running and it's, you're better off having the blade run to help to keep the kerf wide when you're coming out of the cut. Because sometimes if you get caught on something, and it could be something as, you know, just a little burr sticking up, 
you'll pull the blade off the machine. So you want to be careful of that. So now I pulled out about 8 inches or so, but I have confidence that I didn't pull the blade off because, you know, first of all, you can see that it's on the wheels good. The other thing is that the saw moves in there. So you can see it easily moves. So I'm going to just start and finish this cut. dogs up is because I need a flat surface there just for, for those of you who are new to this or not knowing I need a flat surface to judge when I'm done turning the log so right there I've got a nice flat face against the backstop and um, now the thing is is are they too high well you want to check that so I'm coming across here at 7 inches, yeah, they're a little too high for me, so I have them tightened with the dog on the other side, but I think I'm going to lower this a little bit, both of them, so that I don't get into trouble with hitting them. Because you're tightening against a round surface, in order to get this wood parallel to the backstops, you want to look closely at it because if the bottom of the wood has a gap in it, you really can't see a gap in this, but if the bottom of the wood there's a gap right where the backstop is, you may need to move your um, dog down slightly just to make the log turn a little. That's sort of a matter of balance and you can get it to stay nice against the back stops then. You know when you're cutting lumber you get so excited <laughs> and I still do like a kid you get so excited to see the lumber that's underneath it you 
forget to look at what you cut off. So on this side, there's a, a branch, a pretty big branch, looks like about maybe five, six inches in diameter coming out of here. Here's that one that has that little bit of, uh, let me see if you can see this. There you go. Um, this knot here, or this, yeah, this, where this branch was, has that little bit, bit of hard stuff on it that I was showing you before. So, let's take a look at what we got underneath here. I'll bring you in here so you can see this. Okay, so where this branch was, we have this. And it's all solid. There's a little darkening there, but it's still a nice piece of wood. And, you know, people today, they call these features, and they want stuff that has... Uh, people today don't like clear, it seems. They want uh, imperfections. I'm going to call them imperfections. Don't take that as that. Take it more as uh, something different. But anyway, that's what you got from this knot. And then from that side knot, you got something that we, in white pine we would call a spike knot. But nonetheless, it's sound. So, um, if this tree would have gotten any bigger, it probably would have had um, a, been a black knot. Okay? But it didn't quite get that far. So, we've got a sound looking surface there. A couple little, like you can see there was a branch here, one there at one time. Some nice stuff interesting looks like a half a star now this here is a knot and that um, is a black knot so let me see if I'm gonna miss that thing when I do my eight feet here now I'm pretty close so it's gonna be right about at the end of my board once I'm all said and done also guys I had gotten a comment uh, someone had said that uh, $8 a board foot seems like way too much money or more money than you should pay for for rough cut lumber. When I talk about the, uh, the, the uh, lumber, I'm not talking about it when it comes off the kiln, or I mean off the sawmill. I'm talking about what I can get from it when I take it through the kiln, through the planer, and then leave it you know, leave it to sell. That's what I'm talking about. I'm not talking about right this moment in time. I'm talking about it in the future. Okay, so you got to check that for size and see if our 7-inch cant or cant face is there. 7-inch. So 6 and 3 quarters, so we're going to go with that. 6 and 3 quarters. That's good enough. I don't want to go any lower. I might end up with a little bit bigger cant than I thought here. We'll see. And guys, it doesn't really matter when you're cutting whether you do, do the cutting in a clock quarter turn fashion like I'm doing this one or whether you turn it 180 degrees. But what does matter is that when you make that turn to bark, Okay, when you get to the bark of the tree, you want to make sure that the uh, tree is basically adjusted by your tow board to know whether you're going to get through the log with the cant size you want, if you can understand that, or if I set it right. So here, since I have just about 7 inches on the bottom, what I want to look for on this side there's seven, and there's seven. So I'm going to cut at seven inches off the bunk here. And that will give me exactly what I'm looking for in a cant. It's supposed to be 7.1, but you know what? <laughs> if we can get six and three quarters, I'll be happy. And then this lumber, if it's looking this good all the way through, this is going to go into the kiln.
Okay, I want to show you this. So, we look at the flitch. Here we have part of a knot. We didn't, we only cut the skin off of it. This is what we got inside right there. Now this is at this surface. You can see the knot has some uh, rot in there. So we might end up rot down inside somewhere. But that's what that looks like. Okay, so we have that one. And that was right here. That's not affecting this side either. Um, it's going to give a, a little bit of different grain. The wood's probably harder here where the this branch is. I'm not sure why it gets like that, but that's what seems to happen with maple. Some kind of mark there. I don't know how that got there either. Um, then that, this one right here, right there, gave this, which again is sort of outside the log at this point. We don't know what's going to happen when we go down further. So anyway, looking pretty good there so far. Little tiny black knot there, half an inch. I don't think it's going to really matter much in the, in the boards. So now you see what we have there so far. What I'm trying to show you guys is not just sawing. I'm trying to show you what to look out for when you're buying logs. If you buy logs and you have a lot of branches on them, I'm not saying branches are bad because they're not necessarily not bad. It might be what you're actually looking for. But what I am saying is that there could be, like if you see a branch and it's rotted down through the middle, that could be a sign that there's rot inside the tree. Now so far with what we have here, it doesn't seem like it's been showing that. Except for that one, that one um, branch we looked at, or not branch, but knot. That one knot showed a little bit of rot in the middle. So that's this one. So I'm expecting something to show up there sooner or later. But I'm not sure when. Okay. So far, all kinds of nice looking wood. This is definitely worth our effort to cut this. I wanted to show you these adapters while I'm at it. Um, these are the adapters that I make. Now, what I what I made here was this adapter, if you look, has a bolt in there. That's why I call it the stay put dog adapter because I, I tapped the Acme screw from this side enough that the bolt could go in there and be recessed below this face because if the bolt was taking the brunt of the storm from the log, it would only, uh, by tightening and loosening it, you would probably goof up the threads in it. So I have these grooves in here to grab a hole of the log, and then this dovetail um, cut still grabs a hole of the bottom of the log. And I'll show it to you, show you that. So you turn this, and you want to make this so that this spins. You don't want this to be tight on there. So we'll, uh, pull that up against the wood and then tighten this up a little bit here. You don't want to go too crazy because you will tear it out if, if you go too tight. Just tight enough so the log doesn't move. Okay. Let me just see what you guys are seeing here. Yeah, you got the whole log there. Alright, so now... Seven inches is a little bit above the bark there, at that end. It's almost into the sap wood up here a little, but we're not going to let that bother us. We're going to still cut it seven inches. We'll have a little bit of wane on this, but it won't be so bad that um, we can't plane it out or somehow get rid of it as we're using the wood.
Okay, so we'll see what we got here, and you can look at it. So I said we'd get a little bit of Wayne on there, and there it is. Some on that side. Not much. Probably a half inch cut will get rid of that. Now here is where that was. If you look at this, you can see there's a branch coming this way. There was also one coming out this way. So um, here we can see that the, the uh, branch had already started to die before the main part of the log started covering it. But nonetheless, they're hard. A little bit of gaps there. Of course, you can use some wood filler probably to take care of that if you were using it on the face of uh, a cut. And then we have this one. Now remember I said that this knot had rod in there. So you're looking at about that distance. So four inches down in and we still have that little bit of rot there showing up in this board. So this is why I'm saying, you know, when you look at the logs that you're about to buy, if they're standing lumber, standing timber, it's hard to tell some of this. But if you're looking at lumber that's laying on the ground, you know, realize that something like this, or bigger, gives you something like that inside the wood. How far it goes, no one can tell. But let's say you pay top dollar for this maple. Now, you know, there's a board, or at least one board we know of, and we don't know for certain, that's not going to have a clear face on it. So let's keep going and see what we have here. Before I cut this, let's look at something else. Now, there's a tiny bit of wane there, not enough to really bother me. Some over in there. And you might say to yourself, like, you know, where's the next cut? Where, what should I do with this next cut? Well, there's some wane down here. What we can do is we can cut a one inch board off the top of this and get rid of the wane that's on all four corners here even though it's, you know, small. And then it looks like there's fairly clear lumber. Now let's just look over here. But that other bottom board then, the board that's going to be the last board, it also is going to have some wane in it. So basically what, <laughs> what you have here is since we're really close to seven inches, um, you can figure that you're going to get possibly now, if you cut one inch, you won't because of the saw carp. You're going to get four or five clear boards out of this thing that are, you know, absolutely clear if that knot doesn't extend down, you know. So, let's take a look at this and see what happens. So, in, so anyway, what I was going to say is which way should we cut it? Should we turn it or not turn it? If I turn it that way, I can get rid of the uh, wane on the, this side and the bottom. However, if I turn it, let's see, if I turn it that way, one click, I can get the wane off of top and bottom. If I turn it the other way, I can get it off top and bottom. But I also get it off, you know, top and bottom by cutting it this way or, or two sides. So it's really hard to decide which way to go. It depends on how bad the wane is. None of this wane is that bad. It's the knots I'm worried about at the moment. So let me finish cutting.
Now guys, you and I both know from watching my other videos that that belt is defective that's on the drive gear or the drive uh, pulleys. Yet, I've got a nice straight cut here and it's straight this direction as well. That's why I don't think having the drive belt can affect the cut that you get with the... Uh, I don't think the drive belt affects the cut you get. Okay, it doesn't give me a wavy cut. I don't have a wavy cut there. It's nice and straight. So, I'm going to just keep cutting these up quick because my battery's going dead. showing up but this one is hard so there's nothing to worry about there the one that's up at this end right here is getting harder as we go down there is a little imperfection in the board but really not enough to not want the board so this is looking pretty good down to the dreaded pit in maple, but we're going to still take a board out of that because you can see we pretty much got it in the center. Remember I said that that log was fairly centered for the pit? You can see by the length of that that it is a little off here, but that's because of the wide end.
just the pith is in the center of that piece of wood, that uh, board is basically um, on the outside edges is quarter sawn because of the way it's been cut. Now, now one way to get rid of that um, wane is with this last cut, I flip the board over so the wane is on top. So now I'll cut one inch off the bottom and I should get rid of most of that wane, if not all of it. I'm going to shut the camera off and just show you the board when it's cut because of my battery's low. Alright, so that's the last board I got out of there that's a full one inch. So that came out nice. This board that was on the bottom ended up being 7 eighths. Have a good one, guys. Bye.